Page 99, Degree of Unsaturation. Degree of Unsaturation, abbreviated DU, is also called the index of unsaturation and it can be helpful in determining the structure of an organic compound. So recall that a saturated acyclic hydrocarbon has a general formula C to the N H2N plus 2 and we see that in these compounds. Here's propane, it's saturated and acyclic C3H8 fits the generic formula. We can see it's saturated. Propene has one pi bond and it has two less hydrogens, C3H6. So it fits the formula C to the N H2N. A cyclic alkane with one ring, such as cyclopropane, is equivalent to an acyclic alkene with one double bond, C3H6 or C to the N H2N. So we see that each ring or pi bond is equivalent to the loss of two hydrogens from the alkane formula and therefore rings and pi bonds are called elements of unsaturation. Let's consider a couple examples. C4H8, what's the degree of unsaturation? Let's compare it to the formula of a saturated acyclic hydrocarbon C4H2N plus 2 would be C4H10 we see there's two less hydrogens in our mystery compound and each two hydrogens missing is one degree of unsaturation sometimes we say du equals one one butene has one double bond that is one pi bond similarly two butene and also isobutylene cyclobutane has one ring one element of unsaturation as does methyl cyclopropane one more C5H8, how many degrees of unsaturation? Well, saturated acyclic hydrocarbon would be C to the NH2N plus 2, in other words C5H12. Comparing the number of hydrogens, we see there are four less hydrogens in our mystery compound. Divide by 2 tells us there's two degrees or elements of unsaturation. In other words, it has two pi bonds or two rings or one ring and one pi bond. Here's some possible structures. This alkyne has a triple bond. A triple bond has two pi bonds. Here's a diene, 1,3-pentadiene, two degrees of unsaturation, as does 1,4-pentadiene. Cyclopentene has two elements of unsaturation, one ring and one pi bond. And C5H8 has two degrees of unsaturation. It's got two rings. Well, then you ask, well, what about other atoms besides hydrogen and carbon? Well, how about the halogens? It turns out that if you count halogens as if they were hydrogens, the formula works, and you calculate the correct number of degrees of unsaturation. Here's some examples to illustrate. CH3, CHF2, obviously has no unsaturation, it's saturated. If I count the fluorines as hydrogens, I'm saying this e formula is equivalent to C2H6, which fits our generic formula. C4H5Br3, counting halogens as hydrogens, is equivalent to C4H8, which indicates one degree of unsaturation, and so on count halogens as if they were hydrogens and the process of calculating degrees of unsaturation still works. Page 100. What about oxygen? Well, I've listed eight different examples of functional groups containing oxygens and in every case you'll see that simply ignoring oxygens allows for the correct calculation of degrees of unsaturation. Say for example this ether. You can see that it's saturated and ignoring the oxygen, C2H6O is equivalent to C2H6, which is saturated. I won't take the time to work through each example, but you can prove it to yourself that it's true. Then what about nitrogen? Well, nitrogen is different. Organic nitrogen compounds have one more hydrogen than an alkane with the same number of carbons. So when you have a nitrogen in the compound, don't count nitrogens and subtract one hydrogen for each nitrogen present. Let's see some examples. 
So ethyl methylamine has the formula C3H9N. If I want to calculate degrees of unsaturation, we subtract one hydrogen for each nitrogen and don't count the nitrogen. So that's equivalent to C3H8. And you can see that that is saturated. It fits the formula C to the N H2N plus 2. And there's a couple more examples to illustrate that it works. All right, so let's apply it. Determine the number of degrees of unsaturation in the compound with the formula C4H6NOCl. Let's apply our rules. I'm just going to write it out. All right, so first of all, we're going to ignore oxygens. We're going to count halogens as if they were hydrogens. Let's say that's worth hydrogen. For each nitrogen you discount it but subtract one hydrogen for each nitrogen and that leaves us with C4H6. Let's compare that to a saturated acyclic alkane C4H2N plus 2 would be C4H10. So there are four less hydrogens in our compound. Divide by 2 tells us there's two degrees of unsaturation in our unknown compound. Let's draw a structure or two that fits the description. Let's try a cyclic ether that contains four carbons. The ring is one degree of unsaturation and the pi bond is two degrees of unsaturation. We'll attach an amino group. Nitrogen has three bonds. And then I need a chlorine somewhere. I'll put it here. And then add as many hydrogens as needed to give carbon four bonds. So there'll be two more here, one more here, and one here. So if I count my hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, that looks good. Four carbons, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine. There's one of many possibilities. Okay, last question here. Calculate the degrees of unsaturation in this compound. What do you see? Well, the triple bond contains two degrees of unsaturation here. The ring is a degree of unsaturation and then there's two pi bonds in it so there's three degrees of unsaturation here and one in the carbonyl group. So if I add those up I have one, two, three, four, five pi bonds and I have one ring for a grand total of six degrees of unsaturation. Now if I were to take this formula and calculate it based on the formula, I would find the same number of degrees of unsaturation. You may think this is trivial, and I guess it is, but you'll find it useful in later organic courses. And that's it.